I A B there. And now, hi everybody, welcome to I A B there, our regular streaming show where we connect the digital advertising ecosystem. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Brad Barons, editor in chief here at the I A B platforms and Pride. The industry is complex and getting more complex. So who you partner with is key to success as we navigate an ever-increasing media fragmentation. Uh, uh, audiences where attention is going everywhere at once and how do you capture that attention? It's also, and we're excited to feature a series of episodes this month about Pride, this being the first one. This is part of the IAB's Inclusion Institute. If you're interested in learning more about our endeavors around DEI and Pride this month, please go to www.iab.com slash inclusion. Today, our guest is Jennifer Prince. She is a vice president and global head of content partnerships at Twitter. And she gave a stirring presentation at our New Fronts event last month. And I reached out to her and said, please come on to Ivy there and tell us more about what you're doing. So let's welcome Jen Prince onto the stream. Come on, Jen, welcome to IAB there. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So it's exciting to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. You have been working in interactive media pretty much for as long as we've had interactive media. I was looking at your LinkedIn and you go back to uh, Wall Street Journal Interactive in the late 90s. Then you were at Google, then to Google, uh, and recently, uh, you have a new role, which we'll get to. But I wanted to start with a, a, a time machine question. If you could send a note back to yourself when you were working at Wall Street Journal Interactive around about 1999 to, to give yourself the benefit of a sneak peek at the future, what would that note say? That's a great question, Brad. So thanks for framing my career, aging me a little bit here, um, as I have been in the interactive and digital space for 20 something years, it's amazing to look back. And the note to myself would be focusing on how lucky I have been to pick an industry with extraordinary people, great humans, the connection with all of the people within the industry and setting the tone for what digital and the World Wide web and interactive and content and advertising, marketing, all of it over the years. I would have said, how lucky that you picked this industry um, to really kickstart um, a career that has been quite the journey. So to think 20 something years later of the circling back to I'm still in advertising and marketing and content working for a digital platform, a, a mobile platform, uh, a platform that serves the public conversation and makes such a difference in the world. And to see that the journal is on Twitter in such incredible ways, um, it really has just set the tone for really the last 20 something years in feeling so grateful to be a part of an industry and a community um, in what we know as digital. That's, that's a great answer. Let's talk about what you're doing. Uh, you've been at Twitter for, I think, about eight years. And for more than seven years, you when we first got to know each other, you were leading the media and entertainment practice, uh, as, as well as autos and the DC team. But in January, your role shifted. So tell us about the new role, a head of global content partnerships. And, and is this just a, a bigger version of what you were doing before, or is it different? That's a great question. So most of my career has been focused on working with brands and agency strategies that span media, marketing, custom experiences, and content. So my role the past seven plus years at Twitter was focused on media and entertainment, dipped into auto government political at times, um, and have really hyper focused on what it means for sports and news, lifestyle, TV, streaming, film, content, and publishing in such a high growth category with so much potential, more on the advertising side. And so the transition in January to running this content team um, was so natural. It just happens to be that our largest ad partners, the time I spent the last seven plus years and many years prior at Google and other uh, jobs, um, they're also, these largest ad partners are also our largest content partners. And so when I think of um, my passion and desire to service, to be a trusted advisor to these media companies and these entities and these brands, it's really about the whole customer. So to think about Twitter and how we show up holistically 
There's one conversation happening over here, and that's where I spent my last seven years. There's now this, this other conversation, which is so solely focused on content and content in terms of the organic, the way that these the content's showing up organically, but also on revenue monetization. Um, and right now my job is really centered around working with not only these media companies and entities and publishers, but also individual creators and influencers. And so our job is to work with these professional content customers on Twitter to participate in and benefit from what's happening on Twitter. And so it really spans organic to paid to helping gain audiences to create fans and connective tissue with content that brands can align with, but also working with brands on designing and creating content with and for them with these individual creators. So the way we're coming to market is there's Amplify, our business that's focused on um, helping brands align with premium brand safe content. And then there's design. So it's align and design and design is the art house side of global content partnerships. Once again, working with creators, underrepresented voices, helping brands with their own content in terms of content editing and production. And so the job has been a natural one for me to take my next step into really focusing more on content, but it really brings everything that I've done for the many, many years um, into, into one real focus area, which I'm excited about. That, that is, uh, that's, that's not a small job. And, and it also uh, sounds like you've got some pretty massive differences in scope from an individual practitioner who may be trending and maybe dealing with media at scale for the first time versus uh, an NBC, which is uh, you know accustomed to scale. Um, how do you how do you slice and dice those different scales? Yeah, so that's a great question. So we work with sports leagues, rights holders, media companies, publishers, digital publishers, and then like you mentioned, we're working with individuals and how these emerging artists can help create content with a brand or how influencers and creators um, who are sometimes publicly known figures or those who are emerging, um, working on all of it. It is a big job. Um, my team is about 120 people globally. And so we are focused on our areas of strength. And so once again, there's Amplify and Art House. And then we have our teams that are doing the actual deals to make sure that we are working in the right um, terms with all of our partners and really pushing the limits and reimagining how we do engage and how we do partner. And so when you think about our longstanding partnerships of nearly a decade with trusted brands like NBC, Disney, and others, and then you think about how we're working with gamers and creators on going into our curated categories and starting to monetize by way of content with a brand as pre-roll in front of it. Um, there's, there's really, it, it does um, have a large span of control in terms of what we're thinking about, how we're trying to not just take all of the strategies that are so tried and true since Twitter really for almost a decade is working in this capacity, but trying to push the limits on what's next. So if you think about some of our work recently with World Press Freedom Day and the WNBA, um, we're really uh, pushing the limits. And when it comes to Pride this month in June, we're very excited about what we're doing, not only with content partners, but helping brands in leaning into what Pride is, not just this month, but all year long. And so um, the job is big. It's uh, keeping me busy up late at night, early mornings, but it's really rewarding in trying to think about how Twitter serves the public conversation and how video and now audio with spaces is really filling this platform with premium content that users and um, you know fans are, are looking for and they're craving. Well, uh, that, uh, that sort of makes me think about something you said at our New Friends event, which really leapt out at me, but I don't uh, think I understood it. And so I'm hoping that you'll be in my interpreter, which is you talked about how Twitter is the second screen and the first scroll. What is that? What does that mean? Yeah, so listen, Twitter has been the second screen for nearly a decade. So you watch content or something that's happening live in the world anywhere, also on television or on linear. And you go to Twitter as the second screen because we are where the conversation's taking place. And so we stand by our position that we are the second screen and feel differentiated in what we can deliver to users, to brands, to content partners. But the first scroll is once you get to Twitter, right? You are scrolling for what you are interested in. And so Twitter helps 
populate and elevate the interest, the conversation of what's happening in the world. And so when we think about how we have partnered with all of our content partners for over the years and brands who want to align with this content, we really have coined ourselves as the second screen, but it's that first scroll, it's that first action that a user takes, a fan takes to dig into the conversation, to participate, to celebrate, to debate that conversation. And so we're very excited about, um, thank you for noticing, not just being known as the second screen, but also that first scroll. And, you know, whether it's live with audio, with video, with image, um, you know, there's, it's really pushes the limits of what people can find when they're looking for that conversation to what's happening in the world. So let's let's pick up. Let me pull on one thread, which is you just mentioned live and Twitter. Uh, for many people on this planet, is the first place they go when they hear that something's happened, uh, and and so there's there are different kinds of live, and we're seeing uh, an extraordinary renaissance in new kinds of live interaction, whether it be uh, people watching uh, a Netflix show uh, in different locations at the same time, or uh, live streaming commerce. Uh, our friend Jeff Lotman at Fred Siegel is doing a lot of interesting things with that uh, we've been tracking here at IAB. So what does live mean to Twitter? I know that you've done some interesting things with sports, um, but there's, there's the like, it's happening now, which is sort of tracking something in real time, which is a little different than um, synchronized simultaneous experience. So like, how does Twitter think about live sure. when it comes to media partnerships? Yeah, so I mean, Twitter for the entire 15 years we've existed is about what's happening in the world. I'll say it a lot. Um, it's live, it's real time, it's public, it's distributed, we're everywhere. And so when you think about live, you're right, there's different flavors of live. So whether it's a live concert streaming, by Live Nation, or it's then something that clips are taken from that to get highlights and clips. There's live look-ins to any kind of a sporting event. Think NFL, think NBA, think MLB. Um, and then there's Spaces, which is the new audio format where people can come have that conversation that they're already having on Twitter in more of an audio format that is live. And when you come to Twitter, it's all about what are you interested, what are your passions, and where do you want to have that conversation? And so whether it's live real time, whether it's live as in clips highlights from the Grammys or from Oscars, um, there's so much that we need to put forward to the users in serving the public conversation. And some of it is live and some of it is live and captured. Some are live looking, some are highlights, some are recaps, some are after shows. There's watch parties, which are even the pre-show. So there's so much to do and to say that Twitter needs to just create all of these different formats and possibilities for users to consume what they're interested in. I'm reminded of something else that happened uh, at the New Fronts, which is NBC used Linda Yaccarino called Twitter a partner without parallel. And without asking you to read Linda's mind, um, what do you think the special sauce is for Twitter and television? Uh, because that is, uh, I think, an exciting new area that, that that's developing in front of our eyes. Yeah, so we thank Linda for one, being in our new front and for referencing our partnership in that way, especially just thinking of the power of what we're bringing to market, um, NBC and Twitter together to brands and to fans. So, um, you know, we just talked about it. It's the second screen, it's the first scroll. We have always been a compliment to TV and we've you know, been priding ourselves, um, no pun intended, um, on how the power of what's happening in the world and on linear television, streaming, whatever it might look like, entertainment, news, sports, lifestyle, and gaming, how the conversation layer to all of that is on Twitter. So TV and Twitter um, is a multiplier and it's really the concept of we are better together and we've really stayed true to that messaging. And so it's not just because we wanna talk to it, it's proof is in the pudding. We've done a ton of research and measurement to showcase why we are driving incremental reach to what is happening on television because the conversation layer to what's happening on television is literally on Twitter. And so for nearly a decade, this has been um, a very consistent message. And we are excited about, you know, what, what it means to be that natural partner to what television represents. And so for Linda to very gracefully 
talk to our partnership and our expanded global partnership across NBC, you, Sky, um, we're very excited about it. And so we continue, continue to focus on, on measurement and improving what we are providing as that companion to Linear. And speaking of membership, can you tell us about enriched audiences? Sure. So enriched Twitter audiences are audiences that are created by some of our partners that tap into Twitter's own data set and using the unique attributes such as behavior and personal interests, followers, and more, it results in this really hyper-targeted segment that it can expand reach, it can increase engagement. And so it's really a play on targeting, getting even more hyper-targeted, improving overall performance for a brand advertiser. Thank you. Um, so let's let's pivot now because you mentioned Pride a couple of minutes ago. And as I set up the, uh, the episode, we talked about this being Pride Month and we're doing a series of episodes uh, around this. You, you, you sort of uh, hinted that Twitter was doing some exciting things. Tell us more. Yeah. So Pride is near and dear. We had our kickoff just yesterday, early June, um, for our company because what is Twitter not doing for Pride? Um, for employees, for our BRG, for allies to all get involved, there's a whole calendar for the month of June and then some in terms of um, creating events and celebrations, um, forming more community around Pride and um, getting the BRG of Twitter open, intersected with other BRGs like Twitter parents and Blackbirds. Um, and so we're very excited about what we all can participate in as tweeps, as employees of Twitter, in coming together really as one to focus in on pride. And so we're excited. I just joined our kickoff yesterday, and it was very exciting to be a part of what will be not just a month long, but which needs to not just be in June, it needs to be always and, and, and persistent. And so we also know that people on Twitter, users of Twitter, um, are extremely passionate about culture and roots for brands and how they engage in conversations. And so we have research from 2020 and a survey that shows that almost 80% of people on Twitter believe that brands have a real opportunity to lean in and to um, create more meaningful alignment um, with something like Pride or any movement um, and so and any celebration. And so we're excited that we published with Twitter marketing and Art House talking to three key creators, um, their advice for brands in leaning in. And so you can go and check this out. Um, I think it published about a week ago. I tweeted about it. So you can go to Gen P and C or Twitter marketing or Art House. And we're very excited about what it means for brands to lean in. So one example with a brand is Lego and they have their main designer of a very special pride related Lego set that tweeted talking about all of the um, intricacies of how the rainbow, the full rainbow is in this set of Lego Legos. And so you can see brands really leaning into, um, you know, what is this pride celebration month? We also have content partners who are doing a lot around Pride, which is um, very exciting to see and so authentic to someone like Condé Nast in creating um, the Out Now live um, Pride event that's going to be streaming on Twitter. And I think that's on June 22nd. And so this program will have celebrities and conversation performances, um, some segments that will be taking place that they're going to be highlighting on Twitter. And so this is going to be a great showcase of you know, excellent content on Twitter to be live streamed. And then we have content partners like BuzzFeed, um, where they are working through the whole month of June um, with Pride content that's shareable, it's authentic, it's empowering, it has storytelling at the helm. And so there is going to be a lot of great content coming from BuzzFeed and lastly Reuters with their My Pride video series that they're going to be putting out on Twitter. And these will be segments just talking about all of the LGBTQIA plus um, rights around the world and how pride has become like this branded holiday of sorts and celebration and what it means. And so we're excited to be working with not only creators 
on what resonates, where creators can help guide brands on how to lean in and to show up and how to show up, but also with our content partners on how to produce more content around Pride to really serve the communities and, and, and those who are the Twitter users who are looking for more on Pride every day, mm -hmm. not just in June. One thing I want to extrapolate from that is that you, know, you talked about Twitter being the conversation layer um, on the platform, but it also sounds like uh, on a B2B side that Twitter is enabling a series of conversations between brands and content creators uh, around yes. this. So the, the conversation is uh, almost fractal. Uh, I also want to just point out to our audience that we've done a series of episodes of IB there around questions of values and brands, uh, return on purpose, um, how brands can partner uh, powerfully around purpose. And so it's uh, delightful that we're extending that conversation here. And I will uh, look forward to checking out that research that you, you mentioned. Um, last question, uh, you know, we're gearing up for the Olympics and we know that NPCU and Twitter uh, have some big plans uh, around that. Uh, can we look forward to having you back uh, in a few weeks to talk about what's happening and also uh, can, who might you bring from the NBC side? Yeah, I would love it. So six weeks, it's kickoff to the Olympics. Um, everyone's been waiting quite some time for this to take place. So we're all excited. We are, you know, of course, in partnership with NBC, um, bringing Olympics content to Twitter, which we're excited about. So if we come back in the summer months, um, weeks away, I would love to bring likely Krishan Bhatia, um, who is a, you know, the a president at NBC who's working um, solely on not just Olympics and the Twitter partnership, but just on how content and distribution really matters to their business um, going off their owned and operated. And so we partner closely. We'll be chatting in June so we can tee up to definitely come back and talk about Olympics and how NBC and Twitter are together bringing some of the best content to fans around the world. We'll hope to, to welcome you and Krishan uh, to the show to talk about that in, in a shockingly short amount of time. Uh, Jen Prince, thank you so much for joining us for this wonderful conversation on IAB there. Thank you, Brad, so much for having me. So uh, allow me to remind you that this episode of IAB there is part of the IAB's Inclusion Institute. To learn more about what IAB is doing around DEI and pride, please visit www.iab.com slash inclusion. IAB There is a production of the Interactive Advertising Bureau. Our show today was produced by Connor Healy, James Linney, Joe Pilla, and Loretta Bain. I'm Brad Behrens, Editor-in-Chief here at the IAB. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>